back, Ray Rhodes appears to have chosen the future over the present. But for Bobby Hoying, the future is today in the Rockies, where they face the undefeated Broncos. The defending Super Bowl champions remain a well-oiled machine, which may be even better than last year's model. With an air of confidence and a sense of bravado, they are on track to add more hardware to their trophy case. Mile High Stadium in Denver on a cool, clear afternoon, breezy, as the Broncos entertain the Philadelphia Eagles. An atmosphere like no other. Pat Summerall here, and one of the big items going into today's game is who will start at quarterback for Denver. It won't be John Elway. John, I went down and talked to him a few minutes a few moments ago on the field he told me it was very painful he then had a conversation with his head coach Mike Shanahan and then went over and spoke to Bobby Brisser who will replace him as the starter this afternoon Elway was a, in extreme pain this is John Madden of course with me and John when you look at the change in quarterbacks from Elway to Bobby Brister what does that do to Denver well you know that it has to bring them down a little I mean there's no way you can take a great player like John Elway out of the offense and say well it doesn't do anything because we remember the last time we were here just a couple weeks ago against the Dallas Cowboys and on John Elway the first five times they had the ball they scored cool. five touchdowns that was one of the greatest offensive performances that I had ever seen now with Bobby Brister I think what the Broncos do they'll move a little more they'll bootleg him a little more they still have the same receivers they'll do all those kinds of things but I think it's really about Terrell Davis you know this is what made this a championship off uh, a championship offense when they got Terrell Davis and maybe the most underrated part of this offense is their offensive line yesterday after practice and during the week the Denver defense is the one questionable part of this machine Mike Shanahan the defense is ranked 20 in the NFL by the way Mike Shanahan challenged that defense for a to a better performance and that's what he's hoping today that's what the Eagles face yeah and, and if the Eagles have any chance it's going to be that I mean they come in here they're 0 and 4 they went from uh, Bobby Hoying starting quarterback and then he gets injured then Rodney Pete comes in now they're going back to Bobby Hoying today and one thing I know when you play Denver Mike Shanahan is a very aggressive play caller they are going to score a lot of points so you have to be aggressive too and that's what Ray Rhodes said last night he was talking saying Bobby Hoying has to go out there and he has to make plays in fact he says he has to pull the trigger he has to get the ball down the field because when you come in here and I know I've come in here as a coach you have to come in ready for a shootout at Mile High Stadium. So Elway will not play. It'll be Bobby Brister and coming up it's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Denver Broncos from Mile High Stadium and John and I'll be back for the opening kickoff when Fox NFL Sunday continues. Stadium in Denver Pat Summerall with John Madden for those of you who might have just joined us John Elway is out with a bad back Bobby Brister will start at quarterback for the Broncos who will receive the kickoff Elway in extreme pain as he came out and tried to warm up with the team before the game he had a bad hamstring and I suppose that's related to the bad back he has now but he said I got to find out what's wrong with this and it must be John more serious than than we thought and he thought yeah, in, in fact he, even yesterday when we were talking to him he couldn't sit in a chair and uh, he was saying that the hamstring that he injured first he said was very minor compared to the pain that he was having with his back. Interesting the Philadelphia Eagles are having trouble with the kickoff here. There is a lot of wind down they in the sure field. Is. They and sure of course is. They have to have a holder. Brian Dawkins is up to hold it. Ex Eagle Vaughn Hebron back to receive the kickoff and the Broncos machine will go into action as Hebron juggles and brings it out of the end zone to kick off by Bonio. And again, the Eagles special teams, as they've been doing, do an excellent job. Tim McTire down to make the stop. Let's look at the Denver offense. Quarterback by Bobby Brister, out of football for a year, came back a couple of years ago and found a place here with Denver. Tony Jones, Mark Slareth, Nalen, Neal, and Swain in front of him. Terrell Davis, Howard Griffith, the two backs, Rod Smith, Ed McCaffrey having a great year, and Shannon Sharp. 
Mike, Mike Shanahan was saying yesterday that he wants to start off with this first play to loosen up this Eagle defense. And his first two plays are going to be pass plays. Maybe this first one a deep one early. McCaffrey in motion. Rod Smith is the deep receiver usually. But McCaffrey is wide open across midfield to the Eagle 37 yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. And that's what they did to Dallas. That will loosen him up. Yes, that's it that's will. Mike Shanahan we talk about. He's being an aggressive guy. Here we're going to see Ed McCaffrey. He's going to start in motion. He's going to go all the way across the formation. Then he's going to come back on a cross all the way back across here. <laughs> that is something. He started on one side, all the way across the formation, all the way across the field. And even Ray Rhodes said about Ed McCaffrey, because he was with him in San Francisco, this guy has sneaky speed. Troy Benson was the Eagle defensive back assigned to him, and he fell down when McCaffrey made the cut. Well, you know, McCaffrey is a big, strong guy, and I think there was a little bump involved there. Pass was out to Sharp, the flag on the play. Mike Carey, the referee. On the offense, five yards and remains first down. Well, we know that Mike Shanahan scripts the first 15 plays, and like he told us yesterday, the first two plays, and he didn't even know whether it was going to be John Elway or Bobby Brister, and uh, Mike Shanahan, like I said, a very aggressive play caller. It doesn't make any difference. He wanted, you know, sometimes they say you want to establish a run in order to pass. This guy wants to loosen you up in, to, in order to run later. A two tight end set up for Denver. Sharp intended, incomplete, and out of bounds. Let's look at the Eagles' defense. They play a 4-3, and those are the four up front. You Douglas, Johnson, Hollis Thomas, and Greg Jefferson. William Thomas, James Willis, and James Darling, the linebackers, and the secondary, Harris and Vincent on the corners, Brian Dawkins, Dawkins and Michael Zordich start at the two safeties. Matt Stevens will alternate with Zordich. Davis gets the carry, cuts it back. Gets about six. James Willis tripped him up. Well, this guy is something. This Terrell really Davis. Is. You know, I mean, not only not only as a football player, but, but as a guy. I mean, you just talk to him and 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 you can just see why he's such a favorite of all the players and why players enjoy blocking for him because they know that you know you don't know where the ball's going to end up but when Terrell Davis has it he's going to keep working that thing they also see how he blocks when that's required and uh, you, know, you know when you look at running backs that block he's, he's one of the best in football look at this no one in the backfield Brister five wide receivers across the middle of Rod Smith first down Denver Smith stays on his feet knocked out of bounds finally but he never went down this, this is the way that they spread. Yeah, look, here's a receiver here, here, here. Five on the line. Of course, one of them is Terrell Davis and one of them is Shannon Sharp. So they have three wide receivers in there, a tight end and a running back. Right. But they spread you out, loosen you up. And I'll tell you, Bobby Brister, all he has to do, because he has time back here in the shotgun, is just look. And they're always, when you have five guys out like that, there always has to be someone open. Especially when your offensive line does the job that Denver's does. Davis cuts back to 20. Yeah, it's interesting. Back, we were talking about John Elway. We saw him in the in the warm up. You were down there in the field and talked to him. And as I looked down there in the bench, he's not even on the field. I think that he came out for warm up. In fact, when he first came out, he looked kind of yeah, did. frisky, like uh, maybe he could play. And then the more he threw it, just went down and down and down and. I'll bet you the next picture we see at John Elway will probably be in street clothes. Well, he said to me, I can't run. He treated it with ice. He went to a chiropractor right after practice yesterday, treated it with ice at home. And here's Brister, who gives to Davis, and Davis is going to score. That's the thing Terrell Davis was telling us yesterday that he likes to run inside, but in order to run inside, you got to bounce it outside once in a while. He makes it look so easy. Yeah, he says after he gets the ball and he gets out, 
out in the open space, he tries to relax. You see right here, now right when he turns the corner, now he relaxes. He says, because you can run faster when you're relaxed and when you're all tightened up. Did you notice that Griffith, the fullback, went in the opposite direction? Yeah, uh, because I think they're probably starting to key Griffith because yep. they had been running to the side of Griffith all the time. Extra point by Jason Elam is good. You know, everyone has to make some kind of block. Now, now here's, here's what he's talking about. Griffith goes this way, so Philadelphia thinks that they're going to go the way the fullback goes, and, and, and we're going to just take the ball to the outside. You know, Shannon Sharp gets just enough block right there. And, and that allows Terrell Davis to bounce to the outside. Yes. And then once he gets the outside, he has whatever speed he needs. He just shielded Darling off. We get a little block right out here. Terrell Davis is just going to come. He's going to fake inside. See, that brought the safety. When he faked in that six hole, that brought the safety up into that six hole, which is the off tackle hole. And then he jumped out to the eight hole. Thunder is the name of the horse. I don't know the lady's name. Yeah, you don't want to see. If you're a visiting team, you don't want to see Thunder too much. No. We might have some Thunder in the area. Now yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of wind down in the yeah. field. You can see that in the pregame warm-up. Yeah. I'm sure you could feel that down there. And one thing, you know, all those years having coached the Oakland Raiders come, coming in here and playing in Denver, you never know what the weather's going to be, but whatever it is, just wait a while because it's going to change gonna anyway. Change very quickly. I know from doing the golf tournament out here in late summer, you never knew. Now the Broncos are going to have to get a hold of. They allow you one time if the block ball blows off the tee, then you have to put it back up, but you also have to bring someone in to hold it so you don't stay here all day with the ball just blowing off the tee. And you put no the holder puts no pressure on the on the on the ball, but it's amazing how what an effect that has. But he's he's wobbling. He's, yeah, having, he's, trouble. Wobbling it around. he's having trouble holding See? the thing up. See? Fielded by Alan Rossum. And Rossum got a lot of room. Flag on the play as Rossum gets all the way down inside the 30 to the 27, but there's a penalty marker down. Yeah, but this is the thing that Ray Rhodes was talking about, and all the Eagle players were talking about how penalties have been killing them. We're going to see that this penalty is against the Philadelphia Eagles. Ray Rhodes is not a happy head coach. During the return, holding on the return, team number 96. 10 yard penalty. First down. 96 is Al Wallace. Ray Rose, Ray Rose wants to have talk to him. Talk with someone. In a striped shirt, I think. I tell you, those are the kind of things that, that 0 and 4 teams do. Yep. You know, I mean, you. They make a drive on you, you score. Now you have to come back, you have to make something happen. You do make something happen, and boom, lo and behold, there's a doggone flag, and it's against you. The Eagles special teams have improved dramatically. Hoying gives to Deuce Staley, and that looks like a challenge defense. Let's look at the Philadelphia offense, led by Bobby Hoying. He had been hurt. Two weeks ago, came back to start this afternoon. Trey Thomas, and what a prospect he looks like. Mayberry, Everett, Beckles. Deuce Staley and Kevin Turner, the running backs, and they're set to go. No, they're not set to go. Second and 12, they lost two. on the game clock, please. One second they want on the game clock, 12.04. It says they want it 12.05. Up one. And he's not going to let him play until it gets up one. Mike Carey. Uh, he's coming over here. He's coming over here. That's the 04. He wants that to be 05. The 01 second. And then he, he came all the way over to this Bronco sideline. And 12 now it is 1205. So Mike Carey's going to let him play. Well, the umpire's not. He has to stand over the ball because that thing with the wind may just blow away. Deuce Staley deep. Hoying. And 
intended for Irving Fryer. Let's look at that defense that's been challenged by Shanahan. Tanabasu, Price, Trailer, Neil Smith, the front four, Mobley, Kadraz, and Romanowski, all having good years. The linebacking core, Darian Gordon, Atwater, Eric Brown, and Ray Crockett. There's John Elway in street clothes. Three wide receivers this time for Philadelphia. Third and 12. Hoying from the shotgun. Neil Smith forces him up in the pocket. And down he goes. In the arms of Harold Hasselbeck. Yeah, Harold Hasselbeck is the, the, the Broncos are in a nickel defense. Hasselbeck comes in and he plays an end on this side. And you see he just starts up against Trey Thomas and he just gives him a bull rush. Trey Thomas, the, the rookie number one draft choice, the Eagles, can't give that much. Good rush by Hasselbeck. Tommy Hutton standing in the Eagle end zone to punt it. Snap. Hutton gets it out of there. Short kick. Takes an Eagle bounce. Midfield into Denver territory at their 48. And Bobby Brister will come back with this uh, very talented Denver offense. That thing came out of there like a like a knuckleball, yeah. didn't it? Wonder if that was a wind or or just the way he kicked it. It's Gary Kubiak with Brister. Yeah, I think I think so far of, of all the teams that we've seen, that this is the most effective offense. I mean, the the things that that they're doing on offense, we you know we see it when they run the ball, yep. they run it as well as anyone. When they throw the ball, they throw it as well as anyone. When they create, you know, formations and those kinds of things, they do that as well as anyone. I think right now this is the best offense in the NFL. From what we've seen, it certainly is. Here's Brister back to throw it. Out to Sharp. I'd like to welcome those of you who watched Atlanta. Beat Carolina 51 to 23 to Mile High Stadium in Denver, where Denver leads Philadelphia 7 to nothing. I wonder what Jerry Richardson, the owner of Carolina, thinks now. He spent all those millions of dollars to make his defense better, and then they lose to Atlanta for the second time, and Atlanta scores over 50 points. Good gosh, when's the last time Atlanta scored 50 points? Ever? I don't know. I don't. I don't know that they ever did. Davis just skips into the secondary. William Thomas brought him down. You know, it's interesting how Bubby Brister got here. You know, two years ago he was out of football, and Bill Romanowski saw him and and said, you know, he said he, he called up Mike Shanahan. He said, I'm with Bubby Brister here. He said, I think this guy is is worth a look. You well, they had to played together with the Eagles. Yeah, they had played together with the Eagles, and and Bubby Brister had been cut by the Jets, and he was free and. Mike Shanahan had him in and said, geez, he, looked, he started throwing the ball. He said, his arm is just like John's. Yeah. <laughs> John's in his heyday. Brister, low to Davis. Set with himself. Yep. Seven nothing, Denver. We were talking about that offensive line of this Denver Broncos and there's a guy right here, Alex Gibbs, who's a coach of that offensive line. And when you have to talk about offensive line coaches and, and who does a good job, I think Bob McKittrick in San Francisco is one of them, and Alex Gibbs right here in Denver is another. Davis is the lone setback. Intended for Sharp, incomplete. Welcome to those of you who watched the Buffalo Bills beat San Francisco. What a surprising final that is. 26-21 Buffalo over the 49ers. Welcome to Mile High Stadium. That, of course, John Elway did not start, couldn't go with a bad back. Denver still with Bobby Brister at quarterback. Looked very effective the first time they had the, uh, had the ball and drove it for a touchdown. See, now they got the shotgun, but they have four wide receivers. Brister. Close to a first down. 
And I believe he got it. Yes, he did. See, and this is the reason John Elway's not playing the, today when he says that he couldn't run. You see, when they're going to get someone free coming off a corner, the, the, the quarterback has to be able to see that. Then he has to do one of three things get rid of the ball quickly. Two, he has to take a sack. Or three, he has to run with the ball like Bubby Brister did here. John Elway, there's no way that he could do anything that would resemble that today. That's so right. A lot of the Eagle players are slipping. We'll be surprised if we see some cleat changing. Here comes Davis again. To the 10. To about the three before Vincent finally slings him out of bounds. What a great runner this guy is. You see how, how he starts out and he's strong, then he relaxes for a while, then he gets strong again. You, you can just see that in his body. Watch, watch as a run starts. He's going to come out here to the left, but watch the difference. If, if there's anyone that's going to make contact with him, he is going to be strong. Now when he gets out, when, when he gets right here and breaks something, now he relaxes his running again, you see? And then he strengthens it again at the end for a straight arm. That's the same thing, same play he scored the touchdown on, except he went the other way with it. Griffith, the fullback, went to the left and sealed things off. That, that time, the other time, Griffith went to his left, Davis went to his right. You know, the one thing about, about playing this run, and anyone that has to defend the Denver Broncos will say it, the Eagles were talking about it last night, is they always have an onside where the onside of the offensive line zone blocks. They stand up with you. And then the backside, the side away from where you're going, they cut. They knock you down. So he will run the backside of the play as much as he does the front side. Just barely got it off. Brister throws quickly in a hurry. He tried to get it to Howard Griffith, and he is down. Hit hard, but up. So you don't expect that, you know, when you when you, when you have a, a play pass like that, then you expect that they're going to honor the run. And you see that time he fakes to Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis had to had to get out there, and he had to make that block, and he didn't get it done. One of the things the Eagles wanted to do was jam the receivers of the Broncos to throw off their timing. But that was that was tough where Terrell Davis had a fake taking the ball and then make the block. Third and goal at the three, a flag on the play. Before the snap, false start, offense, number 69. Five yards remains third down. I think that's uh, you wait. You wear your headset on a windy day yeah, is like right. that. That's that's, right. that. that's to adjust for it because you bring everything down in front and tighter. And your hair doesn't blow in your eyes either. No, oh, and then you can. It's it's another way to keep your head on straight because you're always worried. You know, as a as a coach, you always say, you know, keep your head on straight, keep your head on your shoulders, and that helps you do it. Brister. Touchdown, Rod Smith. Hey, we were talking about the Dallas game when the first five times the Broncos had the ball, they scored five touchdowns. Now we come here today, and the first two times they have the ball, they scored touchdowns. This is a machine that I don't know, unless you're a great, great defense, I don't know that you can stop this because, again, you see how they spread you out. Here they get just Rod Smith just running a crossing pattern. And with Bubby Brister back there in a the shotgun, he can just wait. And at some point on a crossing pattern, that crossing receiver is going to be open. Extra point is good, and it's 14 to nothing. Denver. They make it look easy. Lions, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Nothing. The Denver Broncos lead Philadelphia at Mile High Stadium. Scoring drive. The last one nine plays, 52 yards. Scored by Rod Smith. The eight-yard pass from Brister. Corey Walker still on his feet. Walker taken down at the 35. Good return. 
The Eagles will take over. Bobby Hoying returns as their quarterback. Eagles ball as you look at John Elway on the sideline in street clothes. Very unhappy with the way his back is behaving. Really up to Hill. That play was doomed from the time they snapped it. Kevin Turner, the intended receiver. Yeah, Trevor Price. Number 93. <laughs> Just knife through there. Yep. He darn near beat Bobby Hoying back. But you'll see 93 right here. He's he's right in the middle there. And he's going to take off and he hits that gap and no one blocks him. And he was racing Bobby Hoying back to the passing point. Yep. Here's Deuce Staley. And I don't know what Mike Shanahan said to this defense, but it worked. Yesterday we spoke to Denver quarterback John Elway about missing today's and last week's games. Well, you know, I think that because uh, I haven't missed many games, I haven't experienced that. So, I mean, it was awful frustrating knowing you couldn't be out there and, and uh, to know that, you know, it's the first time in a long time I've been physically not able to play. So I think that when you're mentally sharp and right, mentally want to play, to be held back physically is really tough. So um, it's not a fun experience. I think you realize how much you really enjoy playing when, when you're not allowed to play. On third and eight, Hoying is sacked by Trevor Price. had a bad back and uh, that's why Rodney Pete replaced him a couple of weeks ago and now he is very slowly getting to his feet yeah, that does. was the second hit in a row he gets pressure from this side you see Neil Smith starts to the outside then he comes inside and then Trevor Price on that stunt he gets free and he's the guy that takes Bobby Hoying to the ground that's a tough thing where you have to zone those stunts you know where they cross where where Neil Smith the end the outside yep. guy he goes inside and the tackle who's the inside guy crosses and go to the outside the guy that came free was Trevor Price the outside guy Rodney Pete will loosen Hoying apparently will stay in for a moment now he's coming out he's being helped out and Pete will loosen up on the sideline well it's they're going to have to punt, so they're going to have a time to check out Bobby Hoying anyway while their defense goes in and tries again to stop this Denver Bronco juggernaut, huh? Wow. Denver 14, Philadelphia nothing. Hutton back to punt. Gordon was the deep back. Ball bouncing around. The Eagles down it just inside the Denver 30. Hoying shaken up on the last play. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Ford F Series. The best selling trucks are built Ford Tough. By Nike. And by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. Back at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Hoying was stunned. The Eagle quarterback was told he'll be back the next time the Eagles get the ball. Davis just came out. Yeah, I think you have to watch out for some kind of trick play because of that, because Terrell Davis was in the huddle on first down and they just took him out. Vaughn Hebron, who replaced him, is in motion. And Brister back to throw it. Brister will not be back to throw it. And Brister hit hard by James Darling who came off the corner untouched. Yeah, we talk about the first 15 plays and how Mike Shanahan scripts those things. Look what they were now he mixes them up. He had six runs and he had nine passes. But I think here's the big thing out of 15 plays he had 13 different formations. So in fact it was Ray Rhodes says when when Mike Shanahan does he uses those first 15 plays to surf. He said he's just surfing to see what you're going to do and he hopes to get two or three touchdowns. He did get two. Davis off to the races again. And he just pulls away from people. You can almost see him relax as Davis is finally pushed out of bounds by Al Harris. He is really something. 
I think, I think it was good to rest him on that first down. And you see, any time, any time that a running back makes a long run, a wide receiver is going to make a block. Rod Smith made the block that sprung him. But you see how he goes again, and then he relaxes, and then he goes? Watch Rod Smith. He's number eight, and he's going to be right here. Now watch the block that he gets down there. As Mike Shanahan says, the offensive you. line can get you five or six yards. He said the wide receivers will get you the rest. 57 yards. Davis gets the rest, and that was Derek Laville with the carry. You know, Mike Shanahan was saying that, you know, he's, he, he's a passing coach, and he's one of those guys would call a pass on every down, but he said you always have to remind yourself. And he said he's always keeping track of how many carries Terrell Davis had. In fact, he says he tries to get him between 20 to 25 carries per game. But with a guy like that, I have to be honest with you, I don't know how you could forget him. It's over 100 yards in the first quarter. You'd have to be on one of those rocks out there we saw. Brister pass complete to Rod Smith. First down, Denver inside the 10 of Philadelphia. Yeah, this is the thing about this team that they're so unselfish. You know, it's not one guy. It's not all about Shannon Sharp. It's not Ed McCaffrey. It's Rod Smith. I mean, one time we see Rod Smith block, and then we see him make a move out here and catch a ball, and, and they do a great job of not only mixing up pass and run, but when they pass, spreading the ball around to different receivers. That's a perfect throw by Brister. Yeah, Brister can do that. Yes, I mean, Brister can. does have an arm, and he can throw it. This is a Denver timeout, so they'll have two left. If that's a mistake, that's the first one they've made, that timeout. 4.22 left in the first quarter at Mile High Stadium. A Denver offense well-oiled, in sync. Well, you can see that they've been down in this situation, goal to go. That means inside the 10 eight times this year and they've scored a touchdown every time and all good teams do that and yep. and usually to do that you have to have a good running back well they have one remember when the dallas cowboys were doing that when emmett smith yep. emmett smith terrell davis is now what emmett smith used to be brister under pressure throws it away james willis put the pressure on one thing the Eagles are doing, there's Emmett Thomas, the defensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles, and they're, they're doing a good job of getting a linebacker free. Yep. That, that, that time it was Willis. We, we had a couple plays before where James Darling, Darling got in there and hit Brister. William Thomas has been in there. So, so he does have a scheme that can free up a linebacker on passing down. And now if he can design one to stop Terrell Davis. That's where he's lacking. Sharp touchdown from Brister. A strike from Brister. Hey, that ball doesn't stay in the air very long when Bubby Brister throws it. And that was Sterling Sharp coming out here to the left. He was on Brian Dawkins, a free safety. Here's the, it, it will see Sterling Sharp right here. Dawkins is number 20. He doesn't run a very good pattern. He just kind of runs a banana out. And Bobby Brister, boom, he just throws it right in there. Sterling Sharp had pretty good position on Brian Dawkins, but that wasn't any kind of big move or anything that he made. That was way too easy. Extra point is good by Jason Neelam. He is three for three. And the Broncos leave Philadelphia 21 to nothing in the first quarter. Tuesday, King of the Hill reveals a shocking secret. Then Sue takes road rage to a new level on Costello. Followed by Guinness World Records Primetime. It's a night of all new episodes Tuesday, starting at 8, 7 Central, here on Fox. The Broncos kick off to the Eagle. This is Alan Rossum. Rossum looking for room. Ball's loose. Flag on the play. There's all kinds of stuff going on down there. The Broncos came out with the ball. The Broncos have the football, but as you say, there is a flag. If it's against Philadelphia, and it looks like it's holding against Philadelphia, obviously they will turn the penalty down. During the return, 
holding by return team number 58. That penalty is declined. First out. Ike Reese guilty of holding. See right there. There's there's the tackle. That's yep. that's that's a, a perfect tackle because you not only put your your head on the ball. That was Derek Lavelle. You not only put your head on the ball and that knocks the ball out, but you wrap the guy up at the same time. And you come from behind him. Right. And then already passed. And then that's why when you get out in front, you always want to put the ball in front of you so that that can't happen to you. Derek Lavelle, remember him, the old San Francisco sure. 49er. Mike Shanahan brought him here. Brister for McCaffrey. Incomplete. Vincent on the coverage. Yeah. McCaffrey pulled uh, Vincent down at the end of this. Well, that's that's going from offense to defense. McCaffrey was was on offense, and then he sees that Troy Vincent has excellent position, so he went to defense, and he just brought Troy Vincent down, so he couldn't get the interception. Like Bobby Brister, because it, Ed McCaffrey is so tall, he's a six foot five guy. I think he was just trying to throw him one of those jump ball things at the back of the end zone. McCaffrey's really remarkable. Here's Brister Davis. Davis to the 20. That might be his shortest run of the day. And you see how he's always looking for that cutback. We yep. Remember where he started early in the game and and he started to the right and he took a bounce out for a touchdown. Now once he's established that he can go to the outside he thinks that widens him out and now he's always starting to the right looking for the cutback to the left starting to the left looking for the cutback to the right. We were talking about McCaffrey a moment ago. People were saying he's too slow. He's not big enough. He's skinny. But now they've changed that tune. I know and now they're putting their best defender matching him up against Ed McCaffrey. He's become the big guy in this offense. He's missed him. Smith. It's hard to say who's the big guy in this offense. Well, I mean, that's that's why it's such a good offense yeah. because there is. I mean, Ed McCaffrey has caught more passes than any of the guys. And a, a year ago, it was this guy right here, Rod Smith, and then they started doing stuff to Rod Smith, doubling him, zoning to him. So they started throwing to McCaffrey. Now they're doing it to McCaffrey. So Rod Smith is going to again get his catches. And then you have to say you got Rod Smith, you have McCaffrey, then you still have Shannon Sharp who just scored a touchdown. And then maybe the yeah. best thing of all is Terrell Davis running the ball. First down. Fake to Davis. Wide open is Shannon Sharp. Inside the five, about the four. You're right. One of the things, just in talking to Bobby Brister yesterday, and the players about everyone likes him. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah, I think that he brings something to the team. Here's here's Shannon Sharp out here. He's a tight end, normally lined up next to the tackle, but they played him out wide, and you see that big cushion Troy Vincent gave him. I mean, he, he had to do that. I mean, if if they cover like that, they could do that all day. One of the things Brister brings is a good arm. He can throw it. He brings that Louisiana arm. Yeah. Davis to about the one. That arm that Terry Bradshaw always talks about. I think they're, I think they're kind of from the same area. They are. They, they yeah, are. Yeah. There was a whole bunch of quarterbacks from that area. Oh my. Yeah. Something in the water there in Louisiana that puts that juice in those arms. Burt Jones, Joe Ferguson. Yep. Well, that's awfully close, but it's it's where the ball is when the knee goes down. Do you expect Davis or Griffin? Davis. I don't know if he got in or not. Yes, he did. The extra point team is trotting on the field. I guess he did. Well, they've been down with goal to go ten times this year, and they've got ten touchdowns. And like I said, the the thing that will usually get that for you is a good running back. But the other thing I forgot to mention is a good offensive line. Because here's where you have to get it. You have to control this area. You have to get the block. Your fullback has to be a good lead blocker, and you have to get everyone going back or down. He looking for the extra point. It is good. You know, you're talking about Mike Shanahan and how aggressive he is with his play calling philosophy, how he 
said to the defense challenge the defense. But with all that and with all that goes on and all the suspicions and cover ups and things that go on around the NFL he's very very open very frank with what he tells you yeah. here's what we're going to do here's our blitz package here's this here's this yeah I asked him about a blitz yesterday and he brought out his defensive game plan yeah. and showed us the blitzes that they were going to use and how they did it he had his offensive play calling sheet sitting right out there he does an interesting thing though that I don't know that anyone else does he tapes every meeting that they have. Then he can sit in his office. Remember the last time we were, we walked in yeah. there? And they have an offensive meeting, a defensive meeting, and a special teams meeting. And he can monitor all those meetings. And they tape each one of the meetings. Every time they present a play, every time they have a meeting, that meeting is taped and kept for the next year. And if a player has a question or something to offer, He's got that on tape as well. Right. Or or if a player is sick and misses a meeting or something, they can give him the tape of that meeting so he can see what's right. going on. I don't I don't know that there's many more organized people than Mike Shanahan. See, even that thing he's looking at, that's that's the Polaroids, the still images. He has them in a binder. Most guys have them flopping around yeah. in their pockets or something. He has them put in a binder. Elam's kickoff sails to the back of the end zone. Corey Walker. Look at this. You know, we can say Bobby Brister in, in no way is John Elway. I mean, John Elway is a one of a kind, but when they put Bobby Brister in, uh, you look under Elway for quarters, they were 8.5, Brister 8.0, point, point 76 under Elway, 87 under Brister. Passing yards 597, 467. Touchdowns under Elway 4, under Brister 6. I think I, I think part of that is Bubby Brister and another part of it is a very good offensive machine. That's the only way to describe it. And it doesn't make any difference who's driving it. Incomplete Charlie Garner the intended receiver. Oh Shannon. Short. And uh, I was just going to say Shannon Sharp was talking about that last week. He says you you have a, a Porsche and, and uh, you let someone else drive it and you don't want it to come in back with any dings or doinks or any of that stuff on it. He said Brister came in and brought it back with no dings or doinks. <laughs> and he's done it again. 28 points by the Broncos in the first quarter. You wonder why Philadelphia ever got rid of Bobby Brister. Yeah. You wonder why they didn't keep him and let him quarterback this team. That 28 is the most ever by the Broncos. That is Charlie Garner. Just a little dunk pass from Hoying. Gets the Eagles at first down with 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. 28 to nothing, Denver. I think this is his first pass completion of the day, and, and you have to get something to get started. They get Charlie Garner out there, and you know, Charlie Garner has a bad ankle, so he's just trying to get that first down and get out of bounds and save that ankle for another play. Back to throw, flag on the play. Same pass, different receiver intended. Kevin Turner, incomplete, but a penalty marker down. Bill Romanowski, the linebacker for the Broncos, was saying yesterday, if Boeing plays, he said we just expect him to dink it and dunk it. He said if Rodney Pete plays, we expect him to throw it more down the field. And Romanowski said, I don't know why Rodney Pete doesn't play. He said he'd be a lot tougher on us than Bobby Hoying, but. Formation. Offense. The wide receiver covered up the tight end. That penalty is declined. Second down. What that means is that the, the wide receiver was on the line. So if he's on the line, then the next man inside him has to be off the line or he's ineligible. So he gets up on the line and the tight end is on that same side then the tight end becomes ineligible so then when he goes out that's an eligible receiver and they use that term covered as you just heard there's hoying back to throw here comes the blitz pass is almost intercepted is intercepted by ray crockett crockett is down the ball is down the officials are saying that the ball hit the ground Think of all the guys on this defense that has really, really impressed the this Bronco staff. It's been Ray Crockett. He's probably been the most consistent of the defensive players. 
And you're going to see him here. He's just playing his own, just backing off. And that ball was that ball was thrown ugly. I mean, that yeah. ball was thrown on a one hop. There was no one there. And I'll tell you, it's tough to play quarterback in this league. And it's really tough when you're playing quarterback in this league on the road. Then be quarterback in this league on the road down 28 to nothing. And be playing at Mile High Stadium. And it's still the first quarter. Here comes the blitz. Hoying gets it out to Jeff Graham for about a six yard pickup. Shy of the first down. Clock. Uh, that's probably the last play of the first quarter. 28 to nothing. The Broncos lead. That is the end of the first quarter with the score Denver Broncos 28, Philadelphia Eagles nothing. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. 28 to nothing, Denver over Philadelphia. As we begin the second quarter, the Eagles waited till so Hutton could punt with the wind. Broncos have a chance. Darren Gordon out of bounds at about the 29 yard line where Denver will take over. John Elway out with a bad back. Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Burger King, if you ask us, it just tastes better. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. The Broncos lead 28 to nothing. They have the ball first and 10. Bubby Brister is the quarterback. He's been very effective. Davis swings over the left side and picks up a couple. Injuries, of course, John Elway with a bad back came out, dressed out, couldn't go, so he is out with the injured back, didn't start. James Willis for the Eagles had bruised ribs. He's come back. He's been to the locker room twice. Bobby Hoying was hit in the head. He's returned. And Alan Rossum has a concussion. His return is questionable. McCaffrey in motion. Brister back to throw it. Sharp. 46. And right now for an NFL update, let's return to James Brown at the Fox Network Center in Los Angeles. Pat and John show you the struggles of Danny Cannell continuing. Throws behind Tiki Bottom, picked off by Charles Minson, 21 yards of pay dirt. Tampa Bay on top in the second by 10. Back to Pat Summerall and John Madden. We're back at Mile High Stadium, and the problems do not exist for the Denver Broncos. If they lead the Eagles, as Rossum headed for the locker room. Here's Brister back to throw it. Outside is Sharp. Not much. You know, sometimes you watch this, this this Denver offense and you and you kind of get the feeling that they're just a bunch of guys playing in the park or something. I mean, Bobby Brister kind of goes back and he throws it to Sharp, throws it to McCaffrey, you know, you know, throws it to the back, and then he comes and throws one to Rod Smith, and he then he hands it to Terrell Davis. And I don't know. It, this has to be fun what Mike Shanahan is doing right now. You know, being playing at home, 28 nothing lead, and everything you call. Is working. Yeah. Davis. Flag on the play. Davis was averaging before this drive started 12 yards a carry. It's better than that now. If this is not called back, it is. This holding. is really the first time he's been stopped, and yep. it's been by a, a holding penalty. I mean, they just get those holes in there. We talk about the onside zone and the offside cutting, and that combination. Holy offense number 69, 10 yards remains second down. On Slareth. That's Mark Slareth, a guy that you know has been around for 10 years. Remember with the Washington yeah. Redskins and one of the Hawks, and he is a big, strong guy, and he has awfully strong arms and hands. And sometimes he put those hands on you. And those hands of his are like clamps. 
And I guess the umpire saw it the clamp that last play. He's had 21 operations. And you know what his nickname is? Stinky. Yeah. And it kind of all goes together. You know, a guard, the offensive line of the Broncos, don't talk to the media. 21 operations. You're from Alaska. Yeah. Played in Idaho. And you nicknamed Stinky. Not supposed to be Stinky if you're from Nebraska, uh, Alaska. Oh, you could be. <laughs> you could be, I guess. Yeah. Flag on the play. What? Titch. But no matter what the Broncos have come up with, whether it's run or pass, right or left, they've they've gashed this Philadelphia Eagle defense. And this is an Eagle defense timeout. So both teams have two left in the first half. Pat Summerall, John Madden, back at Mile High Stadium. You wonder why the Eagles called timeout Pat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They only had 10 guys, no one out here, so they had to call the timeout. And when you're when you're 0 and 4, and when you're getting beaten 28 to nothing, and it's still the first half, you have this kind of look, and things like that happen to you. And you only have 10 guys on the field. You better call a timeout. Yeah, and, but, it's, but it's just one of these things. I mean, obviously the Bronco offense is so much better than the Eagle defense. They've they've had their way with them in anything they've tried to do. And at some point, you know, frustration just sets in. They got 11 men up in the line of scrimmage. Everybody's coming. Brister gets rid of it. Barely. Everybody on the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah, Brister, Brister had to get rid of it. See, see, here's the whole group. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Or, or ten, I guess. But anyway. No, you missed one. There is 11. I yeah. missed a guy because here's Zordich. He's he's up there and he just comes free. He's a strong safety. He was lined up as a linebacker. And we just saw, saw a shot of Emmett Thomas, the defensive coordinator. And I think he just got to a point and said, look, I've had enough of this stuff. Let's just get up there and blitz him. Now he's gone the other way, just a three-man line. And Brister Byers has it batted down. And for the first time today, the Broncos will have to punt. Now you see, he gave him the combination. He gave him the combination. First of all, the blitz. Then he comes back with just a three-man rush, and that's what you try and do. You just try and have a control three-man rush because you know you have eight men covered, and then you just watch the quarterback, and then when he goes to throw it, you just get your hand up. That was Brandon Whiting that knocked it down. Freddie Solomon back deep. Ruin is averaging just under 50 yards a kick leads the league. This is another good kick. Solomon. Flag on the play. Illegal block in the back. I'm sure Al Harris. Those are things you can just see. We're talking about frustration and the the Eagles and and you know you you you, you finally stop them. You get something going, and then, and then boom, there's the flag against you again. Illegal block on the back by the return team, number 31. Half the distance to the goal. First down. 31 is Al Harris, and here comes the block. Al Harris is right here, and, and again, that's the old deal. I mean, if you're the if you're the kicker, you're gonna you're gonna be running down there watching, <laughs> yes. admiring your work. You better put your head on a swivel. I learned that lesson. <laughs> Twenty-eight nothing. Twelve oh two left in the second quarter at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Broncos dominating. Eagles ball at their own eight. And Bobby Hoying at quarterback all the way for Philadelphia. Charlie Garner is the deep back. Hoying. All right now let's go down to the sideline and Don Tollefson. 
Hey, Pat and John, it's been very interesting to watch John Elway's demeanor. A lot of times when a starting quarterback is injured, he does a lot of pseudo coaching. Mostly he's just been congratulating Bubby Brister, going over to him, telling him what a great job he's doing, obviously, of running this offense. You talked about Bubby Brister being let go by the Eagles after two years there, one of them very successfully. He was embittered by a pay cut. He has something to prove today. Back to you, Pat. All right, Don. Garner ducks outside the 10. He was talking about John Elway and the sideline and when we talked to John Elway yesterday you could just see the pain in yeah. the eyes as he was sitting in that chair and, and he finally said you know he said it really hurts me to sit he said I either have to stand up or lie down he said, with this back he said I can't sit so I think we see him up there in the sideline standing up most of the time because it hurts him to sit down. Third down, Eagles. Boying back to throw it. Dumps it outside to Kevin Turner. And you gotta, won't get it. No, you got to be aggressive. I mean, it, you know, it, it's tough to, to say, but you can't throw that dink and dunk stuff. You see, the, the interesting thing the Eagles were doing is the offensive line was holding hands. They're using that silent count. And so they were down there, especially in that end zone on third down. You know, it gets real tough here, but I think. Maybe 28 to nothing. <laughs> it's yeah. not that tough, but the Eagles offensive line on that last play was holding hands. Hutton standing back in his own end zone. Again, a short kick. Gordon lets it bounce at the 45. Denver has the ball at the Philadelphia 44 yard line leading 28 nothing Neil Smith with the colorful band aid across his nose. Yeah he paints those himself yeah. he you know years ago he said against Seattle he broke his nose and he had to wear a, a thing on his nose a band aid he said he played well then the nose got better but he was afraid to take the band aid off because he may not play as well. Brister back to throw and complete. Intended for Sharp. Broken up by uh, Brian Dawkins, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Brian Dawkins was right there. That was one of the the few bad passes that Bubby Brister has thrown today. Yeah. Bubby Brister, Bubby, uh, Brian Dawkins was running underneath Shannon Sharp, and I don't know if Bubby Brister didn't see it or everything had been going you know, so well for him today that he's getting to the thing where he can throw anything anywhere, anytime he wants. Second and ten. That's Davis out of the pack. Zordich and Dawkins. On the stop. Yeah, these are the these are the type of things that Terrell Davis has done today. There's the first one that right. he took to the outside. Here's the long run. Here's the next one, and again he takes to the outside. He gets a good block by Rod Smith, and and just. He is so fast with pads on is yep. amazing. And then to show that he could do it all short yardage and goal line, he just pounds it in. And he just picked up another first down. He is again. And this time at the line of scrimmage by Greg Jefferson. You know, another guy that doesn't get a lot of mention is Howard Griffith That's is right. blocking fullback, but but I've always put those blocking fullbacks in with the offensive line. Remember when Emmett Smith was doing so well and and it was Moose Johnston was one of the best. And and Howard Griffith is that guy for Terrell Davis. He's the guy that's always making that block, that lead block, and he's like that extra guard, like the third guard in this offense, more than a running back. It was great communication too between those two. McCaffrey in motion. Brister to throw it. Pump fake. Across the middle. Shannon Sharp. Close to a first down, but a little bit shy. I think Brister does think that he can get the ball anywhere that he wants to. James Willis was right there, and and he just threw that ball yeah. to Shannon Sharp, and it went right by Willis because this is pretty good coverage. You know, sometimes these guys haven't been covered. On this one, he pumps to the outside. He's looking. Now, really, he's coming back here to Shannon Sharp as his third receiver. 
He just see what he's looking. He's looking to the right. He pumps to the right. He's looking to the right again. Then he comes back in the middle to Sharp. And, and James Willis had good coverage. He was yes, right he there. Reverse to Rod Smith that is open. Smith run down from behind by Brian Dawkins, and he saved the touchdown. Heck of a play by Brian Dawkins. You know, this is one of the things that I'm sure that Ray Rhodes is looking at. I'm sure that all the Eagle people are looking at. You're down 28 nothing. Who's still playing hard? Well, here's one guy, Brian Dawkins, because this from up here looked like a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, he has he has Tony Jones out in front of him. Brian Dawkins come and chases this thing down. Watch, I mean, you can see right here that this is going to be a touchdown, except for right here. And, 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 and Brian Dawkins just comes and he just outruns everyone and catches him from behind. Because if he got out in front, he had Tony Jones down there. He had he had two blockers out in front. Smith still gets a first down. Tonight it's game four of the NL Division Series as the Padres will be looking to close out the series and move on to the NLCS. While the Astros try to force a pivotal game five and keep their postseason hopes alive. Find out tonight following football at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on Fox. There are the pitchers, Randy Johnson, the big unit for Houston, Sterling Hitchcock making his first career postseason start. And I would think that the big unit in twilight might make the ball almost disappear. Let me tell you, I'm from Pleasanton, California. Yeah, Randy yeah. Johnson's from Livermore, California, which is like five miles down the road. Randy Johnson is tough in any kind of light, <laughs> yeah, yeah. believe me. And especially if you're a left-hander. Here's Davis looking for some running room and finding a little. In fact, my son Mike was a a baseball player and he was he was playing for Foothill High School against Randy Johnson in high school. And what did he say about him? <laughs> he made him quit. <laughs> he said he said he can't hit. He said he said you know, he's a left-handed hitter, but he didn't know Randy Johnson was going to be Randy Johnson. He thought everyone, every pitcher was like Randy Johnson. He couldn't hit anymore. So so after his junior year, he played track in his senior year. <laughs> I think that was a wise decision. Well, no, not you're not going to play. play. Yeah, yeah, but you're not going to play Randy Johnson every every right. game. But he didn't know that at the time. Oh, John guys jumping off sides and everything. Did Randy, fire drill, fire drill. Randy Johnson played. Did Randy Johnson play basketball? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he did. I did, I knew him as baseball. Yeah. Start offense number 74, five yards, second down. Talking about Randy Johnson, the big unit throwing fastballs in high school. You know, you know, you know. We were talking. I was, I was at a baseball game the other night. So I I'm saw you. The gun. I'm doing the radar, and they're throwing like 93 miles an hour. John Elway, when he was in high school, it's a true story. He was, he was, he was gunned at 94. He threw a, a 94 mile an hour fastball. So I'm trying to see how that relates to football. I want to get a gun to see how hard they throw the football. Davis runs hard. To about the 12. How fast do you think? Well, I, you know, I have a, some some experience on the gun, so I got one of Bobby Brister's throws today. I, I had it 82. Did you? Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not quite as fast as the did, as a baseball. I didn't. That must have been when I was looking the other way. I didn't see the gun. No, no, just from experience. Oh, I've oh. done the gun. Now I can just tell with my raw eyes. Oh. And you know, you know and, and and but the. The fastest guy that I've timed so far is Brett Favre. And Brett Favre throws the harder than anyone. How fast? I had, I had him 93. Mm. That's fast. Pass is picked off from Brister to William Thomas, and William Thomas gets the Eagles out of the hole. Bobby Brister tried to throw that one right through there because William Thomas was over there. He was just playing in his zone. Yeah. He was just sitting there. And you're just going to see 51 here. William Thomas, he's just going to come straight back in here. Bobby Brister, I think, was either trying to throw it through him or didn't see him. That needed a couple more miles per hour yeah. to get through those hands. No, 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 no. He had good MPHs on it. The only thing is he, he couldn't throw it through. But then you see what happened? The, the guy that's always going to be the first guy there, especially if he's a backup quarterback, is going to be the guy that threw it. Now watch Bobby Brister. After he throws that ball, he knows, uh-oh, someone has to tackle this guy. Watch Bobby Brister go get him. 
That's not bad. No, the MPHs uh, were there, but not the not the rest of it. The RPMs or whatever. Kevin Turner gets the carry. The Eagles keep the Broncos out of the end zone. It's 28 nothing. I know what everyone's going to be thinking now that the Eagles should have started Rodney Pete and you know they're going to have that quarterback controversy and all those things and I think I think what the Eagles knew is that Rodney Pete had been a starter for them before and that he wasn't the answer he's a good backup for yeah. them, and they know that he's not the answer as a starter week after week they don't know about Bobby Hoying and they have to find out and I think they are finding out Hoying ducks under the rush tucks it under and is hit hard. A real collision with Glenn Cadrez. Yeah, and that's what a quarterback learns. You never, you never, ever give a square shot to a linebacker. I mean, you always, you either have to turn or you have to slide, but you never take them on square. And those linebackers, Cadrez, when he gets a shot like this, he can't believe that he's getting it. Where a guy puts a quarterback puts his head down and squares into a defensive yep. guy. You never, ever, ever do that if you want to continue playing this way. Third and ten. Hoying has his man open. Freddie Solomon will get an eagle first down. Now we were talking about scripting and what Denver did. Here's what. Here's what Philadelphia did. Of course, playing from behind can yeah. change the script too. But you see that they ran the ball four times and passed the ball 11 times, and and whether they ran it or passed it, uh, it's been tough for them. They get a first down at their own 46. The hawing hands to Staley. Staley gets a yard. Trevor Price took him down. You know, one of the one of the bright spots of this Eagle team I think has generally been the offensive line and specifically this this big tackle Trey Thomas I have really I've really been impressed with him watching him on film and he's a big guy's 350 pounds but he has great feet look at him he's six foot seven 350 pounds out of Florida State and because he went to Florida State he does have a pretty good handle on pass protection he's not a great run blocker yet. But he will be. I only remember being beaten once today. That was when Hasselback yeah. beat him on a pass rush. Staley again. Looking for room and not finding much. Maybe a couple of yards. And that play there, he wasn't quick enough. Mahatanavasa just got inside him and, uh, and, and just beat him to the gap and got all the way down. You can't, even though you're running away, you learn this. Watch it. If this is your guy, you have to cut him and stop him so that he can't come in here and make this play. You see Tanavasa gets the inside. You see Thomas doesn't stop him, and watch what happens. See who's down there to make the play right there. See? And you you can't cut him like that. You got to throw at no, him. No, and you have to be quicker. I mean, you have to you have to get up before he does. This is where he's pretty good, right here as a pass protector. Here's Hoying, incomplete. And the Eagles have to punt. In fact, we got a good pass protector. Now all we need is a passer, huh? Yeah. Because this is good pass protection. You watch here. See how they're holding hands? Because when the when the guard lets go, that means the ball is snapped. And here, you see the feet that he has? Yep. He always has his feet there. He's always square. And he's a, you know, at 350 pounds. You keep 350 pounds square, it is tough to get around that. Darian Gordon back deep to field Tommy Hutton's punt. And this again is not one of his best. Takes an eagle bounce, however, and goes down and down at about the one yard line, maybe even inside the one. Walker. Next week on Fox NFL Sunday, the Carolina Panthers will head to Dallas to take on Michael Irvin and the Cowboys. Plus other regional action coverage begins at noon Eastern 9 a.m. Pacific right here on Fox. So check your local listings. You know there's some talk or there was some talk that uh, Troy Aikman was going to try and get back for for that game next week. That was his announced intention. But I don't think so. Well, you know I 
heard that uh, last week he went out and he and he was just trying to take a snap. Yeah. And the jar of the snap bothered his collarbone. So I don't know that he may not be longer than a week away. I think uh, with the way Jason Garrett's performing, he probably will be longer than a week. Here's Davis again up near the 10. And then you wonder how long John Elway is going to be away. You know, once you once you get that back, I mean, the hamstring was one thing. And you know, with rest and so on, that that's going to be okay. I think, I think with the back, uh, uh, you really don't know. And I think that that's something like you were saying, and he told you that he wants to get this checked. He wants to find out what it is. I got to find out what's wrong, is what he said. Remember, Troy Aikman had that. He had a hamstring, and then he had a back, and he had back surgery. Two minutes left to play in the first half. We get the two-minute warning with Denver leading 28 nothing over Philadelphia. Two minutes left in the first half. Denver 28, Philadelphia nothing. Some fairly ominous clouds moving in. Bill Romanowski being stretched over on the sideline as the Denver offensive unit will give it another go. Brister gives to Davis. And Davis is taken down. You know what Terrell Davis was in high school? He was he was telling us yesterday he was a fullback and he was a nose tackle. A nose tackle. And I think that's a pretty good combination because when you get a, a guy that comes from that, he's going to be a good blocker and he's going to understand pass protection. He's going to be a tough guy. I remember I had Clarence Davis and he was my running back who was a great running back. I mean maybe the best maybe the best blocking running back that, that ever played you know, as a blocker. And he was a guard in high school. He was a guard in high school and a shot putter in track. And I thought now if you can go from a guard in high school and a shot putter in track to be a halfback in the pros you're going to be a good blocker. And Terrell Davis is a lot like that. Coming up on the Visa halftime report JB and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the league. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa halftime report. I wonder if we'll okay. see the guy okay. in the Here barrel. You know, there is, you know, oh, saw yeah. the guy in the bag over. And, and then there's a guy that walks around here a lot over the years that just dresses in an orange barrel. That's a Denver guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> We're going to have to get a bigger barrel, I think. Uh, it's the same thing. I mean, the, the question has always been over the years is what does that man have under that barrel? <laughs> that's, that's a question I don't care to find out about. Yeah, I don't think anyone does, but it's still, <laughs> it's still a question and uh, has remained and will remain a question. Well, there's some stuff overflowing in top uh, that it didn't used to be <laughs> overflowing. Well, you have compilations up in there, yeah. and, that, and that's what you know does happen. The thing that strikes me is those suspenders are a little bit wider than they used to be. Well, yeah, he, what goes through your mind? <laughs> well, he thinks he's looking good. Yeah. I mean, he's cool. He's trying to be cool. So? Because, well, he doesn't know he's on television. I think if he knew he was on television, I'll guarantee you. I don't know the guy, but he'd have some kind of act to put oh, on. Oh, he'd suck it up, I yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> orange boots, an orange barrel. Just a regular costume to go to the game. Bruins kick is blocked and it goes out of the end zone. And that'll be a safety. William Thomas came flying in and knocked that ball out of the end zone. Yo, know, that's that's the second time that they've done that. That, that they've gotten awfully close. You're going to see Thomas. He started to the outside and then he come in the inside. They were very close coming from the other side on an earlier punt. They've been going after these punts and this 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 one here Thomas does it perfectly. Yeah he gets right there where where, where where he's going to get that. And you see he comes he times it he comes right up the middle. Ruin goes to kick and he's kicking it right into William Thomas. Now had the had the Eagles been able to get that ball before it went out of the end zone touchdown. that would have been a touchdown instead of a two point. Twenty eight to two. Safety rules two points awarded to the defensive team and a free kick now will occur from the 20 yard line. So that's that's the thing the Eagles will get the ball again and they'll get it in in, in good field position. Now what you do on this is you have your kickoff team 
uh, along with your punter. So you have your kickoff team, they're the cover team, and your punter punt. Then on the return, you have your kickoff return team with your punt returner as a deep guy. See, so this here is a kickoff, and the punter will kick the ball. This is the kickoff return with your punt returner back here. Because he's used to handling punts. Ruin will have a free kick. He can't cross the 20, but he'll punt it. And this one is off the side of his foot. And out of bounds. Don't forget again, coming up on Fox Baseball. If Houston wins tonight's game, by the way, tonight game four, and if Houston wins that game, game five will be on Fox Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Tonight's starters, again, a reminder, Randy Johnson and Sterling Hitchcock. San Diego's trying to make it to the NLCS for only the second time ever. Houston trying to avoid losing in a division series for the second consecutive year. So the Eagles, because that punt went out of bounds, will start from midfield. They treat it as if it were a kickoff. After it bounced out of bounds, and Bobby Hoying incomplete and intercepted. And off to the races is Darius Johnson. Darius Johnson, did they turn this thing around in a hurry? Out of bounds at the Philadelphia 13. Yeah, we were talking about what Bill Romanowski said, and with Bobby Hoying, all he's going to do is dink and dunk. So the Denver Bronco defense, even though they were in a nickel defense, they're playing for the dink and dunk. So they get it right here. You see, they're just sitting there waiting for it, get a heck of a hit. Darius Johnson is just sitting back there as a nickel back. See, they got a stunt going up in front. You see, just as the ball gets there, you see he gets that hit from Kadrez. The ball bounces out, and Darius Johnson gets it. But those linebackers are sitting in there just playing that short stuff. They're not, they're, they're not dropping. There's no reason to drop back 10 and 15 yards. They're sitting there at five yards playing the dink and the dunk. At some point, you have to be aggressive and get the ball up the field. Davis comes in motion. Brister incomplete. Going back to baseball again, let me correct myself. If Houston wins tonight, game five will be here on Fox on Monday night. I said Tuesday night. It'll be Monday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. So forgive me. Well, at least, at least in his first half, Philadelphia did get two points. Two points. Then they get a free kick and the safety. Get the ball at midfield. And all of a sudden, it's Denver again. Great field yeah. position, and they they can't. They haven't done anything aggressively on offense. McCaffrey touchdown. McCaffrey down in the end zone after scoring. Now he's up. Yeah, he has to get up to give a salute. Watch, he will give a salute. You see me. McCaffrey's out here and he's just going to come underneath and just sit right there. See, come under control and sit. They drive the defense deep with the corner. He is coming under and he's just sitting and waiting there and Bubby Brister sees him. Again, good pass protection. You see Bubby Brister has time to wait and look and then he just zips that thing in there. Elam's extra point is good. 35 to 2. Get it here, and Ed McCaffrey knows that you know once he gets that ball, the first thing you have to do is put it away and protect it. The next thing, get it into the end zone. I just saw him. You could see him looking oh. to see that he was in the end zone. Let's see what happens. Well, he, he knew he was in the end zone when he planted his head in the yeah. end zone. Yeah. He just he just drove his, his his head right into the ground. That's what they're checking his neck. I mean, yeah. he went, he went to dive, and he, and he, and he dove head first. The first thing that that hit him was the back of his head. The first thing that he hit was the back of his head. 35 to two, 110 left to play in the first half. 
They better yeah. win. Well, Thunder's getting tired. I mean, if they if they keep uh, uh, you know scoring like this, they're going to have to give uh, Thunder an IV. <laughs> Get them some fluids. It's they're nice gonna, and cool, however. Yeah, but they're going to dehydrate thunder. You can do that. They did that in Kansas City. Had one called War Paint. Kansas oh, City beat the, beat the heck out of us one day. We darn near killed War Paint. Philadelphia is close to getting thunder here in this first half. He touched the inline. He didn't come out though. He didn't come out. Mike Carey was right there yeah. watching the ball, and the ball has to come all the way out, and it didn't come out. That's uh, Jason Elam, the kicker, who's apparently injured over on the sideline. But he got it on the kick. Yeah. Watch that. He kicked, and he he grabs the back of his knee right away. Yeah. I wonder if that's not one of those things like you do in golf sometimes when you, you hit down with the club and it goes up your, your wrist. Does that happen? Do you hit down on that? No, you shouldn't. Hoying. First down yardage to Irving Fryer. Yeah, and that's the first pass that Irving Fryer has caught. And I think that. Again, the, the Eagles are really overmatched here, but still your thinking has to be more aggressive. I mean, you have to at least try and get the ball out to Irving Fryer. Screen pass. Intended for Deuce Staley. Hoying had to hurry it out of there. Yeah, you know, you can't really throw a screen pass until you've established that you can pass the ball down yeah. the field because, like I said, they're, 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 they're sitting on your dink and duck. There's, there's Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, the new offensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, John Gruden was the offensive coordinator, and he's now the, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. But at some point, like I said, they have to get aggressive against this defense. At least try to be aggressive against them. Right now, the defense is aggressive. And Neil Smith is among those. And he goes into his familiar baseballs. Home run swing. Bill Romanowski on that play, Pat, uh, uh, just hurt himself. He had a, a pulled groin, and then he just took himself out on that play. Neil Smith, we're going to see him. He's just going to come right here, and he makes a good pass rush move. He just goes right by it. A flag back by Hoying. And that's probably going to be rushing the uh, roughing the passer. He rushed the pass. Maybe it's holding. Holding. Offense number 72. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's the rookie Trey Thomas. Trey Thomas. The guy that was beating the play before that was was on Richard Cooper. He was the guy that Neil Smith beat. And sometimes a guy gets beat like that, uh, Neil Smith, and he goes back and holds the next play. But but it wasn't Richard Cooper. It was over on the other side. It was against Trey Thomas. Tommy Hutton, his sixth punt of the afternoon coming up. The Broncos came after that one. Hutton gets it out to Gordon. And Darian Gordon gets a couple of blocks and then slides at the 42. Coming up again on the Visa Halftime Report, J.B. and Terry will have scores and highlights from around the league, and our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. Well, well knowing Mike Shanahan, I mean, it scores 35 to 2, but knowing Mike Shanahan, this isn't going to be a kneel down. No. Nope. We see Jason Elam, his kicker, going in, and, and, and he's going to take a shot. Smith also went into the locker room. A very aggressive coach, is Shanahan. A very aggressive runner is Davis. Elam came back out. Now he's turned around and going back in. 
because that's the end of the first half with the score the Denver Broncos 35 the Eagles 2 Fox NFL Sunday will continue with JB and Terry and the visa halftime report after these messages and a word from your local Fox station games Fox Sports will have two interactive questions you call it and ask the pros these questions are for those of you that logged on to the internet while watching our game you can participate in these questions by logging on to Fox uh, Fox Sports .com. this week's you call it which team the Eagles or the Broncos will have the most rushes in the second half of today's game join us on the internet log on to Fox Sports .com. and we wish you good luck this week's ask the pros question is from Jeff Bozeman in Montana if John Elway remains injured could Bobby Brister lead the Broncos back to the Super Bowl you know, and my answer is going to be yes for two reasons one that first half we just saw 35 points Bobby Brister threw three touchdowns and the way he runs his team in the machine and the other thing I remember back to 1990 and Phil Simms the New York Giants was injured Jeff Hostetler had to come in and take his place and I made a statement there's no way that a backup quarterback can lead a team to the Super Bowl well lo and behold Jeff Hostetler did the Giants did and they won so I've learned never say never so I will never say never again lo and behold I like that we're just about ready to go with the second half now as they're lined up to kick it off Tom Ruin who is the punter Remember that Jason Elam on the last kickoff or the last yes the last kickoff grabbed his kicking leg went to the locker room came back out and went back again and now it's ruined to kick it off so we'll see if we can find out what happened to Jason Elam I wonder yeah he's going to kick a soccer style I was going to say I wonder if a the backup kickoff guy would also kick it sidewinder and obviously he is. Not many steps, not much distance. Fielded about the eight by Walker. Walker is taken down as the Denver Broncos special teams along with other all the other teams. Well, you know you Do said earlier job. that uh, Mike Shanahan challenged his defense to play a whole game today and you saw in the first half the Eagles only got two points in. You wonder after you know the first half did, did did we see great defense or or poor offense and I I think it was a, a combination of the both I think that Denver uh, has played well defensively and offensively the Eagles have offered him no challenge whatsoever still Bobby Hoying at quarterback for Philadelphia He gets it outside to do Staley who skips out of one man picks up about six that's William Thomas over on the sideline trying to focus the eyes and make sure that he knows where he is there's Jason Elam Hamstring is the word as to what happened to Elam. Here's Deuce Staley again. Deuce Staley doesn't make it back to the line of scrimmage. You know, the other thing, Pat, I don't see Bill Romanowski out there. Remember just the, at the end of the, the half on a play, I, I saw him on a second down play. He came out, he took himself out, and then I don't see him out there now, nor do I see him on the sideline. And, Remember when we talked to him yesterday, he had had a, a groin pull. In fact, he was icing his groin at the time, and I wonder if he if he re-injured that. And this is what they were doing to him. Remember during the game, they were trying to stretch him out. So I'm not sure if he aggravated that again. Pass incomplete. Intended for Russell Copeland. Nothing there. Yeah, but the Eagle offense is just totally inept, so yeah. it doesn't really make any difference. I mean, the, the Broncos aren't at a point where where they need Bill Romanowski now. And you know, Rodney Pete, it looks like he's smiling and laughing, and he does. I mean, he, you know, then I think sometimes people misread that. Like I do he's, too. He's laughing at it, but you know, 
over the years and we've seen Rodney Pete for so many years he's always doing that he's yep. always done that and that's Rodney Pete Gordon no place to go good coverage that's the one place particularly that the Eagles have improved over last year special teams they covered it well Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by First Union, your guide to the financial world. It's that time of year when the leaves are starting to turn to the gold. Beautiful sight. Derek Lavelle has replaced Davis. Brister. That's what we thought we were going to see more of today is a bootleg. In fact, that was a play, remember, against the Dallas Cowboys that John Elway was injured on a bootleg. So they kind of took the bootleg out for him, but they did put the bootleg in. And, and, you, and you see Bobby Brister make a fake here. Then he's going to bootleg out to the left here. He's looking for the crossing guy up there. And then he waited just a little too long. You know, at some point on a cross, the guy's always going to be open. But he was open before Bobby was ready to throw the ball. Bill Johnson was in pursuit. And I think Bobby heard him coming. That's LaVille. Yeah, I wonder if Terrell Davis is not going to, to, to play anymore today. We look at what he did in the in the first half, and that's kind of a, a full game's work. You know, you know, you know, where he ran, he ran to the left five times for 88 yards. He ran to the right six times for 42 yards and he ran up the middle nine times for 38 yards. So it was a pretty good mixture of left middle and right and wherever Terrell Davis ran he he did pretty yeah, good. That, that, that's a pretty good day right there in the first half. Yeah one of the touchdowns was up the middle and one of the touchdowns was to the right. Brister gets Rod Smith and he might be out of bounds before he gets the first. The first guy over there to argue it is Bobby Brister. They say he was juggling it. That official says he was juggling it. And so it will not be a first down. They'll have to punt. Incomplete. The receiver was bobbling the ball at the reception. See right here, his, his, his feet are in bounds, but he didn't have control of the ball is what they're saying. They're saying he was bobbling. I don't know that he bobbles this I at all. I, I don't think he does. No, no, no. He didn't. He didn't bobble that at all. That's a good catch. No, no. When they made up that sign of bobble, they made one up because there's no bobble there. Got his hand underneath it. Yeah. No. That was a the old phantom bobble. Ruin back to punt. Low snap. Powerful leg. Freddie Solomon will return. And he only gets a couple of yards before John Mobley. Did a Mobley fly down there, wow. didn't he? Woo. Remember the first time we saw him? 35 to 2 Denver. Terrell Davis down on the sideline. He might be through for the day. But pretty good numbers, nevertheless. <laughs> pretty good. Usually when they take the hard hat off and put the cloth hat on, that means that they are done for the day. Hoying looking at Neil Smith. Uh, low to Jason Dunn. Right now, let's send you down to the sidelines and Don Tollefson. Hey, Pat, as you and John mentioned, nothing wrong with Terrell Davis. He's healthy and very, very satisfied with his effort. They're just not going to play him here in the second half, apparently. Bill Romanowski, though, still in the Broncos' locker room. He has a problem with that groin. And when you have this big lead in this kind of a game and a big game next week against Seattle, last thing you want to see is a guy get hurt. But Romo has a groin problem. Back upstairs. All right, Don, thank you. Hoying back to throw. Just ducks under the pressure. And it comes from Keith Trailer. Keith Trailer, he's so proud of himself. He's he's pumping that nine and that four. He can't believe it. Keith Trailer is one of the middle guys, and what they do is, is they start on a twist. You see him there. He started, and and then he does what they call a twist or a twins, and just the two tackles. Trailer goes one way, Price goes the other way. They just exchange. Then he just came right up the middle free. 
Third and ten. Three wide receivers set up. Now if they can protect him. Hoying incomplete. Intended for Irving Fryer out of his reach. You know, we talked about Bill Romanowski being out. The guy taking his place, of course, is Seth Joyner. Ex-Eagle. Think about Romanowski being an ex-Eagle. So the ex-Eagle, Romanowski goes out, and another ex-Eagle, Seth Joyner, comes in and takes his place. Tommy Hutton is number four, seven punts already. This will be number eight. This is his best of the day. Got a few blockers. Flag on the play. As there usually seems to be. This field seems to be a heavier or, or more slippery yep. field than it usually is here. When the Eagles came out here to practice yesterday, they talked about how high the grass the long was. Long grass, yeah. And then today it looked like a lot of players have slipped. Yeah. Here comes it Bill Romanowski. The kicking team downfield offense, number 58. Declined. First down. First down, Denver. They lead it 35 to 2. Third quarter at Mile High Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Yeah, you look at those Philadelphia Eagle uh, offensive linemen down there, and one thing that really has to upset them is they've only run for six yards today. The Broncos will run for 192, and the Eagles will run for up. And when you're an offensive lineman, that, you take that personally. That's Derek Laville. Interesting story about the line coach. Yeah, Juan Castillo right there. On crutches. Yeah, he was he was walking in the stadium and he and he got hit. Got hit by one of those yeah. golf cart type things. And yeah. Utility he truck. To, or he tried to keep coaching, and Ray Rhodes says you had to do something, and went to the doctor and needed surgery, and they put a pin in his leg, and he was back the same day coaching. Brister from behind. Hugh Douglas put the rush on Brister. That was a good move by Hugh Douglas. He he. Got up the field and then came back underneath. A lot of those times, those rushers will just get up the field and then they'll continue up the field. But watch Hugh Douglas here. He gets up. Now he stops and comes back under. I mean, the easiest thing to do is to run beyond the quarterback and end up behind him. I used to tell my guys, hey, look, there's no reason to be behind the quarterback. He's not going to lateral to you. You got to make that move that Hugh Douglas made coming underneath. Three wide receivers set up. Brister drops the throw and hits a wide open Rod Smith. Rod Smith will get a Bronco first down. The other thing that's always impressed me about this this Bronco team is is, is, is how smart they are. I mean they they don't play the most physical of games, but they, they, they have quickness and they're and they're very precise, but they're very intelligent. I mean they know they get in the shotgun. Rod Smith coming on across here gets the ball now knows exactly where that first down marker is and how to get to it you know, and just get beyond and get the first down. Ray Rhodes that's that's the sign and the stance and the movement of frustration. All you can do is shake your head. That's Vaughn Hebron. And he gets about eight yards. You know you're talking about this Bronco team John we were at practice yesterday. And I was saying they have a youthful look about them and you had an in interesting observation too they have a very sleek look about them. a lean look lean yeah you look. don't you don't see there's a lot of fat guys in the NFL now and uh, like I said I mean, we have a group you know the Brotherhood of United Bad Bodies of America but on this team here you don't see a lot of bad bodies I mean on offense or defense I mean they say that Remember when the, in the Super Bowl they said this line is, is too small. They're not going to be able to handle the Green Bay Packers. They weren't too small and they did. That's Hebron again. And he'll get it up for a first down. Yesterday we spoke to Denver linebacker Bill Romanowski about the differences in the team between this season and last season. 
I think we're stronger this year. I think we're stronger in, uh, you know, a lot of positions. We got better backup players. Uh, you know, Mike has done a, a great job of keeping us focused, not letting us get complacent. And, uh, you know, training camp was a little tougher this year. And, uh, you know, I think the hard work is paying off. Well, he said Mike has kept us, kept us focused. He challenged the defense today. And they have risen to his challenge. And he's kept him focused all the way through. You know, they had their best off-season workout, and as Romanowski was saying there, they had a tough training camp. And now Mike Shanahan says it's a 16-round fight. Frischer gets it out to Howard Griffith. That's the bone that Griffith gets. Yep. And you know, it's just what the fuck he's been blocking all day and he's been blocking great. I mean he you know he blocked for Terrell Davis all those yards and they put in Derek Ravel and he's been blocking just two plays ago, a great block. And then, then they finally figured, you know, we got this poor guy, he's been a, a, a ramrod all day. Let's give him the bone. And that's his bone, a little two yard pass. But uh, he is he has done a job. I mean he you know, if you said all the guys that have the most respect on this team, he would be like in the top five. Howard Griffith would be on this team. And talk about losses from one team to another. The Carolina Panthers have not been the same since they lost Howard Griffith. Jerry Collins hasn't been the same. No. Brister, pass caught by Smith. Rod Smith, who had such a such an intimidating good year last year for Denver. This year he's. Uh, Still a part of the machine, but it's only a part. Yeah, that's the thing. They started to, you know, to do things to Rod Smith. Like we're saying, they they gave him some double coverage. They would they would rotate their zones toward Rod Smith, and that's why Ed McCaffrey was so successful at the early part of the season. Now they're starting to do things to McCaffrey, so you see Rod Smith getting more into the game plan. McCaffrey was on the move. Lavelle, who with a second second effort gets a Denver first down. You know, one of the things you think of Ed McCaffrey and as a wide receiver, and and the thing with this Bronco team, the wide receivers also have to be blockers, but even at the point of attack, watch McCaffrey here. He's going to come in motion. Now he has to come back here and seal this backside for the run there. Now that's a wide receiver coming in and ending up in a tight end position. And you see he got a little block there that really freed Lavelle to get the first down. First and 10 at the 31. Here's Brister, the Eagles blitz. Brister going deep to Smith who's in a neighborhood by himself and in the end zone. Al Harris was the corner out there. I think he fell down. I don't think he fell down. I knew he fell down. But that's that's the easy one. Here's Al Harris here. I watch as he goes to make the little out move. He bites on the out and then he slips and falls down. But it didn't make any difference nope. if he fell down or not. He went for that double move. It was the old out and up? Out and up. Yes. Al Harris went for the out. Rod Smith went for the up. So did Bubby Brister. Boy, this is way, way too easy now. Ruin for the extra point. I don't think so. That was a bad looking extra point. That's that's one of the few bad looking things this Denver Bronco team has done though. 41 to 2. Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. By Toyota, every day belongs to you. Make it count. By Canon Laser Color, its only competition is reality. And by Wendy's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. When you're hot, you're hot. Forty-one to two. The Denver Broncos are tough at this stadium. They're tough anywhere. Corey Walker on a return. Let's go back at that last touchdown, John. Yeah, you know how everything is a, is team. I mean, the, the first thing you have to do is get pass protection. I watch this pass protection. 
when Bobby Brister is ready to throw the ball look there's no one here there's no one near him so he can not only see but he can step up to throw the perfect pass and then the other end here we know what Rod Smith does a little out Al Harris bites for the out then he falls down Bobby Brister lays it in there perfectly but it all starts you, know, you can have all those pass patterns out and up double moves and all that stuff but if the line doesn't pass protect like that none of those other things ever happen. Charlie Garner behind Hoying. Jason Dunn. The yeah. offensive line deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, this is a this is a group that again they don't talk to the media, but 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 they do a heck of a job. I mean, you know, of, of pass protection, of of run block, and Tony Jones left tackle, Mark Schwereth here, Tom Neal in the center, real good Dan Neal, Harry Swain right tackle has been a been a real surprise for these guys. And when they lost Gary Zimmerman, you know they needed someone to step in, and that guy was Harry Swain, the right tackle. This is a Denver timeout. Time the Broncos get the ball, it'll be Brian Greasy. Rookie from Michigan, their third round draft choice at quarterback. Son of a guy you know pretty well. Yep, Bob Greasy and the Miami Dolphin quarterback under Don Shula. And there's only been one undefeated team in the history of the National Football League, and his dad led that team. That's Garner put out of bounds by Gordon. There's a flag. Flag on the play. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 21, 15 yards, and automatic first down. Yep, that's number 21. Yep. Right there is Darian Gordon. You're going to see again, he has him, and then right there, he gives him that little shove after he gets out of bounds. And I think that this is a time that the officials do have to get pretty close on this stuff because when you when you get a route like this you're going to have you know frustration you're going to have things happen and I think the officials have to call it pretty tight around now. Four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Boeing has the Eagles in Bronco territory. That may be the first time today. Boeing for Jason Dunn. Incomplete. Hit him right in the numbers. Yeah, we were talking about the Bronco offensive line and how they don't how they don't talk during the week to the to the press or they don't talk to anyone. Part of that is their coach Alex Gibbs, as we see here, we see that that ball was darn near intercepted. Yeah. And then it hit him, hit done right in the numbers. McTire had it go through his hands. No, no. Not to be confused with McTire. McTire. Did. When I first saw that McTire, I thought that was Tim McTire. Tim McTire is now out of football. That's Garner. So I was talking about that offensive line, Pat. And it's Alex yeah. Gibbs is their coach, and Alex Gibbs he, he doesn't talk to the media, and you know it's kind of a thing. So then they didn't want any of their linemen to talk to the media. It's kind of a fun thing if someone does. There's Alex Gibbs right there, and it's kind of a joke. And it's, you know that. That they're just the grunts. They just do the work and they shouldn't get any publicity. And if anyone writes a story about any of the offensive linemen, then he has a fine system. They get fined. So then they don't want to talk to the media because they don't want to get fined because they don't want anyone to write anything about it. Which is most unusual. Hoying gets it outside to Irving Pryor. But as I always said, winning is a great deal. Yeah, oh yeah. And when you win, everything becomes fun and funny. And when you lose, there is nothing fun, nor is there anything funny. I've got a better look in the headset now. Shanahan does. Yeah, when you're ahead 41 to 2, you don't have to put as much through that headset as you did earlier. Garner. To the 25. 41 to 2 the score the Eagles best offensive effort by far. I know you were talking to Jeff Murray earlier the owner of the Eagles and he was feeling good about one part of their team or two parts two I guess parts, the offensive actually, line yeah. and the special teams but 
that's that's the way I think you do build a team is through the offensive line. Then when you get that and you get solid, then you got to go get your quarterback, and that's what they really have to do next. Going back to throw to Kevin Turner and uh, why even run a play? Well, that's you know Ray Rhodes was saying he really likes Kevin Turner and he wants to get the ball to him five to seven times a game. He, you know he's not just a blocker. He's a guy that he feels when he gets the ball in his hands can do something with it. But uh, when you're down 41 to two, the Kevin Turners of the world aren't going to blow this thing open for you. I'm not sure who is. Well, I mean you got to take some shots for Irving yeah. Flyer is what I would say. Boying pitches back to Garner. And Garner does not get the first. Mobley is the first Bronco defender there. Yeah, it didn't do any good, but watching Trey Thomas run, you can see what an athlete he is. When you get a guy who's like six foot eight and 350 pounds and can run like that in the open field, I mean, he doesn't get anyone, but just the way he runs, I mean, 350 pounds to be able to move like that. Of course, you have to be able to move back yeah. inside and hit a blue jersey, but he looks good running. Fourth and one, and the Eagles, of course, will go for it. This place is romping yeah, here. Yeah, the Bronco fans are shaking the stand, and Hoying has got room to run for a first down if he wants, and he does. Yeah, during that process, he had a couple of guys open. He had two crossing patterns, and that's usually what you do on a bootleg. You, you know, you bootleg, and then you have guys crossing from the other side of the field. And he did have them open at at, at, at different periods. See, as he's going to come out here, now watch his crosses. You see, here's a cross right here. Up, oh, he ran into the official. That's a, that's a problem with that cross. But at some point, he's going to get open. And he did get open after he ran into the umpire. First and ten Eagles, just outside the 14. A lot of noise coming out of that end zone. Now yeah, those are the South stands, and they've they've been as noisy as any any group in football. Looking, they're proud of themselves now. Look yeah, at oh yeah. I remember in the old days, our locker room, Pat. Our locker room door used to be right there, right underneath these people. And you'd go in there, and they'd be throwing stuff at you here, and then and then you'd be in there trying to talk, 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 talk and they'd be jumping up and down, and you couldn't hear yourself talk or hear yourself think. That's from, an excuse. From hearing you talk about the times you came here with the Raiders and when you were the coach, I get the idea, the feeling, just me maybe, <laughs> that they didn't like you much here. No, they didn't. No, 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 they really didn't. It was. It was it was very it was very very competitive and in fact we lost a, a championship game here and one of the years that the Denver Broncos went on and played the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl but it was this group here man they, they, were, they were a lot louder in those days I'll guarantee you. Oh, you These just, are the sons of those people. You just, sons thought, they and were, daughters of those you just people. thought they were louder. I knew they were louder. That's Garner inside the five. I think one of the things Ray Rhodes wanted to do was to use a backfield with with Charlie Gardner and Deuce Staley because Deuce Staley has been a halfback, but he can also play fullback. So they got that formation that they call Thunder and. He would like to mix that in with with part of it where he's in with Kevin Turner like they're in now. I and mean, when you get down to the goal line you don't want the two halfbacks in there. You want the big fullback like you got right here Kevin Turner to do your leading. Garner is deep. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Denver Broncos 41 the Philadelphia Eagles 2 Fox NFL Sunday will continue after a word from your local Fox station. The Broncos don't want them in the end zone. Defense. You know, D and then a ticket fence. You know, these fans are great fans here, though. I will say that they've always, even when the Broncos weren't a winning team, they've always supported this team. 
Here's Garner. And he's going to get in. Charlie Garner scores the first Philadelphia touchdown of the afternoon. A little late. Oh, is it just play? I mean, I mean, it does give them something. I mean, you got to get started. They got another quarter to play, and you got to, you know, you got to keep going at it. Ricky Waters yeah, got a little heavy in the offseason. Yeah, he's not here anymore. Up in Seattle. Chris Bonio hits the extra point. I think they can the center on that one. Yeah. <laughs> 41 to 9, Denver. Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. By Intel, makers of the amazing Pentium 2 processor. And by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Spectacular scenery around Denver. To the west, and surrounding. Bonio to kick off. Vaughn Hebron back deep for Denver, and he'll have a chance at returning this one. To the 28. Remember that extra point, Pat? I was saying yeah. the can to center. Remember when you were a kid, you said no can in the center? That when the center's bent over and he has a ball between his legs like that, that you can't hit him and knock him over? Watch these guys can the center. That's, that's a double can on the center. They must not know that game. Well, they didn't call it. No, if you don't call it, yeah. if you don't call no can in the center, you can can the center. Brian Greasy is the Denver quarterback. Son of Bob, and they tell us he looks very good. That's Vaughn Hebron, the ball carrier. Bobby Prister had a very successful day. Touchdown pass to Rod Smith. Touchdown pass to Shannon Sharp. Touchdown pass to Ed McCaffrey. Touchdown pass to Rod Smith. Four touchdown passes. I would say when your backup quarterback can come in and throw four touchdown passes, he's keeping the machine going. Ties his career record. That's Hebron again. You know, Mike Shanahan was saying yesterday that, that he was hoping to, to get a game like this where he could give Brian Greasy a little time. He said he didn't want to just put him in there, you know, at the end of a game and just have him kneel down. He wanted to get him in there and, and, and let him play and get a, a, a feel for some regular season football. And I'll tell you, if he's as cool as his dad, this, this stuff isn't going to bother him at all. He's bigger than his dad. I'll tell you, his dad could play. Oh, yeah. His dad was good. Incomplete. Vaughn Hebron, the intended receiver, should have had it. I remember watching the Rose Bowl, and it was it was Brian Greasy against Ryan Leaf. And everything that Ryan Leaf would do, Brian Greasy would do. I mean, he was throwing the ball like this in yep. the Rose Bowl. Hey, that's and a I good said, throw right there. I said, yeah. I, I said, if Ryan Leaf was one of the first players picked, this kid ought to be. Right, right up there. I didn't see Ryan Leaf do anything in the Rose Bowl that I didn't see Brian Greasy do. Well, he had some great, great days in his collegiate career in Michigan. Ruin pounds this one into the end zone. Seventy one yard punt. He was averaging about fifty. Would, would you fly that plane? No, nope. never have, never will, never would have. I don't and I don't I know anyone well that it. would. I don't know anyone that would fly in something like that. Oh, I would. You would? Yeah. It's got two wings. That's more than what I usually fly. You fly in one of those things that's painted yellow? Yeah. It's a joke. Boing. Back to throw it. Pat, 
at how tough this place is to play and the, you know yeah. part of it's a crowd and part of it's the Denver Broncos and and they always remind you the altitude here you know like it's called yeah. Mile High Stadium they even have a sign in the locker room that gives the elevation here it is right here look at this this is in the visitors locker room elevation 5,280 feet. So you're constantly, you come in here to play and you're constantly reminded of it. And inevitably, that's what you talk about. Oh, remember the air is thin in Denver. Yeah, and you, we you need know, oxygen. And you bring the oxygen, yeah. and you have that over in your sideline. And then you look out there and you see the mountains so you know that you're up in them. And then Mile High Stadium. And then they have to put that sign yeah. in your locker room to remind you. Just to make sure you know. Yeah. Second and eight. With a team like this against a team like the Eagles, that's the last thing they need. Hoying appears to be changing the play. People looking around. <laughs> Mike Lodish might have jumped. Before the snap, false start offense, number 72. Well, he's pulled Five off. Yards, second down. Yep, there's the there's the oxygen there. Remember one time I mentioned last, last time we were here that I, you know how you how you have water and stuff over there and and, and you just pick it up and you just drink it up. One time we'd made a long drive and and the guys were getting oxygen. I went over and put the oxygen thing and the whole offensive line was lined up behind me. And for five years they never let me forget that. You took my oxygen. I did. I took their oxygen in Denver. <laughs> Here's Hoying, bounce to the ground. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. Associate directors Mike Roy, the broadcast associates are Fran Morrison and Charles McDonald. Technical producer Bob Muller. Studio was produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The associate director was Jennifer Love. Senior producer is Bill Brown. The executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. 41 to 9, Denver leading Philadelphia. To Garner. You see, Hoying has been hit 11 times. And after you've been hit 11 times in a game, sometimes you just fall when you. When you start to twist or you go into your own guy, that was that was going down again way too easy. But you know, you know, he's been he's been knocked around there pretty good by this Bronco defense today. And I think not only knocked around physically, but you know, frustrated yep. mentally and emotionally. Been a tough day. Hutton gets off another good punt. Gordon retreats. Slips out of bounds. Trying to cut back. And Denver will take over. Flag on the play. I'll tell you, that was, a, that was a late flag, and I think it was one of the Eagles hitting Gordon after he was down. If you watch Gordon right there at the end, he went down, and someone came in and hit him late on the sideline. Well, he slid out of bounds when he tried to cut back. It looks like the Broncos are going back. Yep. Well, it doesn't look like it's There's against no the foul Eagles. For blocking the back. All the action was legal. All the action was legal. Oh. He called it and went through that. Yeah. <laughs> and then said all the action was legal. Forty one to nine, ten eighteen left to play. 41 to 9. The Eagles, their quarterback troubles go back to Randall Cunningham in 1995. He was the starter, replaced by Rodney Pete, coach's decision. Rodney Pete replaced by Ty Detmer when Rodney was hurt. And that's going to go on and on. We'll be back to that. Derek Lavelle. In 1997, Ty Detmer started. His record was two and five. Rodney Pete replaced him. And bought Bobby Hoying then came on and finished the season. That was all a coach's decision. Now this year, Hoying was the starter. Rodney Pete replaced him. 
moved the club pretty well last week against Kansas City. Now Hoying is back against Denver. And this is Coy Detmer, Ty Detmer's brother, who appears to be destined to be the next in that line of quarterbacks. As is picked off by Mike Caldwell, and Caldwell is cut down at about the five yard line somewhere in that neighborhood. Brian Greasy didn't have enough on this one. It's a zone defense and if you're going to throw an out against a zone defense you have to get it outside and low and you have to get it out there quicker. Caldwell was just sitting back there in the zone and that ball stays in the air way too long. Yep. Watch he's on the right hash mark he throws it out to the right and, and Caldwell just jumps right underneath that thing. And here is Coy Detmer. You were going through those those Philadelphia quarterbacks and you know it's the old story to me I've always said when you have two or three that means you have none and really since Randall Cunningham went down the Eagles really to be honest haven't had the number one quarterback. Boy Detmer back to throw it. Ducks under one throws back across the field to Jason Dunn after all that Dunn's out of bounds at about the three or two yard gain. I was going to say it's going to be a complete it's not a touchdown. That's one of the things. You know, we saw Brett Favre do that you know, for a touchdown yeah. last week. But you always teach, you know, don't run one way and then throw across your body across the field the other way. That merchant did it and he <laughs> threw a duck and, 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 and they caught it, but it wasn't a touchdown. The but difference is uh, Brett Favre, you don't see throw many ducks. No, Brett Favre puts mustard on it a tight spiral. And, Oh, Coy Detmer was hit as he threw that one. Detmer, touchdown, Garner. Ball came loose after he got in the end zone. You know, that's the same same play they scored earlier on, and and you saw Glenn Cadrez, the middle linebacker, trying to get there, and he's upset because he doesn't get there because he was talking after the last one that he should have that play. You see, and he's coming here, and he waits just a little too long, and then the cutback, you see, he gets there just yep. a little late because he waited for the first cutback. And Garner gave him a little juke to the inside and froze him right there. After the last touchdown, I saw him talking to Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator, and Robinson was kind of giving him a heck about that. Bonio, extra points good. And it happened again. He dips in there. And Charlie Gardner does give him a little dip in there and then gets to the outside. 41 16. Next, it's game four of the NL Division Series as the Padres will be looking to close out the series and move on to the NLCS. While the Astros try to force a pivotal game five and keep their postseason hopes alive. Find out next following football at 7 30 Eastern, 4 30 Pacific on Fox. That's coming up next. Bonio's kick. They're expecting an onside kick. That's Von Hebron who slipped. <laughs> Starting pitchers in tonight's game here on Fox. Game four, Randy Johnson. And Sterling Hitchcock making his first career postseason start. Randy Johnson lost game one, but he pitched very, very well. Struck out nine. And the chances of Randy Johnson losing another one, uh, I think, are kind of slim. And of course, I've you know had the radar gun on those guys. I'd yeah. like to put a radar gun on on Randy Johnson. The guy that had the radar gun said the fastest he ever saw was a 103 mile an hour fastball. From it was a surprise to me because I would have I would have picked you know a lot of other guys, and this guy that he told me wasn't a guy he's been around a long time I'll tell you that this may yep. be like a trivia question it is 103 miles an hour he's around a long time but to me you know what I know about baseball he was never known as a, as a fastball pitcher you know you're he was never known for his speed well, but, no. but you can't remember who he was no, I remember no I was just oh. I was just oh, waiting oh, oh you were asking a trivia me. question I was going to say Nolan Ryan uh, that's that's what I would have thought. Someone like that, or, or Randy Johnson. Was it Tom Seaver? No, it was Earl Hershiser. Earl 
Earl Hershiser. Yeah. Hmm. That's what it was. The guy said that that's the fastest he ever timed. And uh, Earl Hershiser, 103 mile wow. an hour. Wow, I would have never guessed that. No. I would have guessed something's wrong with the gun before I said that. Uh, or the guy. I mean, maybe there was a guy in New York. You yeah. know, I don't. I don't know who the guy is. He told me 103. What do I know? He said Earl Hershiser, but it had to be someone. Well, was, you were. It you was were. the fastest the guy ever did. You were at the baseball game. And the and and the fastest I ever did was David Wells, 93. Didn't Rivera throw job, 95, 96 that night? Yeah, but I wasn't on the gun then. Oh. Yeah, I mean he threw it. He threw it later after I was off the gun. But you know the thing is, with David Wells, I mean, you mean they this took is kind of off the subject. But the thing is, is David Wells was throwing like 93 mile an hour fastball, yeah. and then his stuff was like 73 or 74. So there was a 20 mile an hour difference between his fastball and his stuff. That's what made his fastball so effective. I yeah, guess. yeah. I mean, so you're waiting for that 93 and you get the 73, then you're waiting for the 73 and you get the 93. David Wells looks to me as if he could possibly make an all Madden team. I already put him on. Oh, he's on. I, yeah, I put him on the all Madden team that night. It's Pat Bowen, the owner of the Broncos. But you know, David Wells looks like a, a nose tackle, but he pitches like a surgeon. I mean, he doesn't throw like a nose tackle. He looks like a, a nose tackle who couldn't play for Denver because he doesn't look like he's finely tuned. No, he's not, he's not as finely tuned as most of these bodies. Freddie Solomon back deep. But who would have thought that Terrell Davis in high school in San Diego would have been was a nose, a nose tackle? tackle. Yeah. yeah. And he has a nose tackle. Temperament when he runs with the ball. You know, another guy that has a nose tackle temperament as he plays quarterback is Brett Favre. Yeah. What's this? This ball was partially blocked. The Eagles fielded it, lost it. And I don't know who got it back. Nobody. I think yet. rugby broke out. I think it's like rugby. Yeah. Did you see that? The I mean, bodies everywhere. I mean, that punt came out and then it was coming out sideways, then it was tipped, and then and then Someone else got it, and then it was fumbled and it went backwards, and then they all jumped on the pile. It was partially blocked. They ran around the Rosie. Denver got it. Partially blocked by Tim McTire. There's Ruin. There's a partial block yeah. right there. And then it was it was just about caught and fumbled, wasn't yeah. it? After yes, that? it was. By one of the Eagle linebackers. But there's a partial block that make it go sideways. I think it's William Thomas who finally wound up with it after it was partially blocked. See, the reason it was partially blocked is he took the extra step there. Then it was caught. Then it was started to be returned. Then it was knocked out. That was Al Harris. Al Harris. Returning Al Harris. And then he fumbled it. And then another lo and behold. Boy, Detmer, the Eagle quarterback. Denver hands to Staley, who's taken down by Neil Smith after he loses a couple. What if you would have said before the game, you don't know what the score is, but, but the quarterbacks in this game are going to be Brian Greasy and Coy Detmer? What would you guess? I would have said that would have happened before that. I would have said I, I didn't want to be with you last night. Like everywhere around this league this yeah. year, there's backup quarterbacks playing though. Trent Green and Jason Garrett. Detmer throws it out to Staley. And he gets nothing. No, you know, if you just look at the NFC East and how they're struggling this year, just look at their quarterbacks, and that's that's the reason. Yeah. Danny Cannell. Bobby Hoying. Bobby Hoying. Jason, Jason Garrett. Garrett. Trent Green. Jake Plummer. And Jake Plummer, second year. Remember when it used to be? I mean, you used to have your Theismans and your Simses and you know your Troy Aikmans and Cunninghams. Cunninghams and yeah, everyone, everyone had a gun. And then everyone had a defense in that division too. Yeah. One of those Eagle defenses, Reggie White. Ball goes straight up in the air as Detmer's hip just as he cocked his arm. By Neil Smith and Detmer is slow to get up. Not very big, about the same size as his brother. 
Well, Neil Smith got in there and hit everything about the same time. He hit Detmer in the in the head and the arm and the ball and everything. Here's Neil Smith there. And watch him. He just drove him right into the turf. The only look, his legs were still moving. <laughs> he still thought he was trying to get some traction. <laughs> it was where he had his, his toes up over his nose. So Hutton in the punt. Darian Gordon back deep for Denver. Hutton's 10th punt today. That's a new career high for Tommy Hutton. The ball bounds into and out of the end zone. And Neil Smith, they're checking that hand. That was the hand that he laid on Coy Detmer. It made Detmer go on his back. If he still has a band aid on his nose. Oop, that's, uh -huh. that's the thing. You know how you touch that thing somewhere, that deal right in there between your thumb and your first finger? And you touch that, and then that makes the whole thing go. That little right there. Web in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see, you got it. Yeah. yeah and, and it shoots right up your arm. Yep. Yeah, I think we've all had that one. I, I, don't, I don't remember what it is, but I remember that where they touch something and it goes all the way up. I know you don't want them to touch it again. That's Vaughn Hebron, the ball carrier, flag on the play. Usually when the referee throws that, it's going to be offensive holding. Usually on the right side of the line, the, the referee and a right-handed quarterback stands on his right side watches a quarterback and always and also watches the right side of the offensive line holding offense number 78 10 yards first down that's Matt Lepsis they like him they yeah. think he's going to be a player yeah and uh, and he is the right tackle and that's who the referee was looking at he was a tackle on that side again when you see a referee and a right-handed quarterback call holding it's usually going to be in the right tackle but he was a tight end. He yep. was a tight end at college, and sometimes those guys make pretty good tackles. Well, you know they're pretty good athletes. A fumble. Blue ball, second down. And they got it back. Vaughn Hebron. Vaughn Hebron is another one of these Denver yep. Broncos that used to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. All right. You know, as you look at this Bronco team, they're made up of a lot of guys that used to play other places. You look at Neil Smith there. We know he was at Kansas City. Trailer was with him at Kansas City. McCaffrey, you know, he was with a number of teams, including the 49ers, Vaughn Hebron, Philadelphia, Seth Joyner, Bill Romanowski, Philadelphia, Bubby Brister, Philadelphia, Philadelphia and others. Yeah, a lot of guys were with teams and others. That's Vaughn Hebron again. 41-16 the score with four minutes left to play down. You know, one thing, I mean, there's not a lot of good news for the Philadelphia Eagles. They're going to be 0-5 today. But next week, they get to play the Washington Redskins. And, and they're really, to be honest with you, when they come in here with this team, they're really outclassed. But now next week, you know, it's kind of like who's the best of those bottom teams, and they can kind of start fighting that battle a while. Or who's the worst. Yeah, that'll, that'll, then that's a downer for them. Here's Hebron. Down before he got to the first down marker. But the clock keeps running, and here comes the Denver punting team, Tom Ruin. You look at this Philadelphia defense, and they don't have the dominant defensive player that they had, you know, over the years. No. And they don't have that guy. They don't have the quarterback, and and that's tough when you don't have a dominant defensive player in your front seven, nor do you have a quarterback or a great running game. I mean, there's not a lot of things there. You kind of have to hang your hat on your special teams or and the, the offensive line. Here's Ruin. And a flag on the play. That's Freddie Solomon slides in midfield. The ball's out of there, but he was down. Boy, you talk about collisions in football. And I think I think on punt return and kickoff returns are some of the most violent collisions other than that slant pass on offense are the most violent collisions that we have. Well you get so many 
so many yards to get up ahead of steam and hit somebody. Well, it starts out there in the outside, and, and those guys always do a battle out there. <laughs> I mean, they just yeah. get knocked sideways and everything, and where the real collisions are are inside, right there in the bottom of the screen. There was those a flag are. on that play, but they picked it up. So no penalty. That's the second Offside, time. Defense number 35. That foul is declined. First down. That one was declined. declined. But on another one, they 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 had a penalty, and then they said there was no penalty. Yep. Although I think that this has been a pretty well officiated game today, and these are the kind that because the Eagles are going to be frustrated, it could get a little sloppy and could get a little out of hand. I think the officials have done a good job of keeping control of this game. I agree. Gets the carry. I think the Eagles are just trying to run the run the clock out, and, you, know, yeah. you know, and get out of town. And like I said, you know, you know, next week get 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 back in their conference, get back in their division, get one of those rivalry type of games. And Ray Rhodes, he's going to be down for a for a couple of days, but by Wednesday or Thursday, you know, get them all fired up for the Eagle Redskin game. Barrett Brooks has replaced Trey Thomas. Detmer's pass is knocked away and. Mobley comes up limping. Ooh, that's what that's what they don't want to see right now. That looked like, you know, that, that, that's the old thing. Remember, that's the same yep. thing. It looked like John Elway had, and that's yep. when they grabbed the back of the leg. It's one of two things: it's either a pull hamstring or a cramp. All right. And as a as a coach and as a player and as a trainer, you always hope when they do that it's just a cramp. But when you're ahead 41 to 16 with two minutes left in the in the game, you don't you don't want that to happen to one of your better play. We don't want it to happen to anyone. But certainly not a key man like Mobley. And Denver has a big game next week against Seattle. They sure do. Walker takes the pass from Detmer and gets out of bounds inside the Denver 15. I think Mo Mobley had a cramp. Forty-one sixteen, less than two. Eagles have the ball, trailing forty-one sixteen. Coy Detmer is their quarterback, and Detmer fires incomplete. For Irving Pryor had it, dropped it. Coy Detmer, you know, you talk about uh, you know a family, and you know his his brother Ty played. Played for Green Bay, played played here with the Philadelphia Eagles, is now with the with the San Francisco 49ers, and you know you know, you know he's a real competitor. I mean he's been he's been a quarterback uh, all his life, and you know, you know his yep. brother was a quarterback, his dad was his coach, and and the Detmer family is a real football family. Detmer drops again and throws again, incomplete again. Of course, this is kind of one of one of Coy Detmer's homes. He, he he played here at the University of Colorado. Right. Right. So he's throwing a couple shots in here. I mean, he likes this thing. This slant comes in there. That's that's a little behind him. That's that's a that's a tough one there. Now, if you don't hit that slant perfectly, there's nothing that the receiver can do about it because he has to catch that thing on the run. If you throw it too late, and I see a lot of quarterbacks doing that. They're leading them right into the free safety in a real collision. That's Mark Carrier. Detmer was hit as he cocked his arm. And Neil Smith gets another yep. baseball swing. Yep. Neil Smith around the corner. Neil Smith has kind of been having his way over there. He's been he's been on any quarterback the Eagles have had in there just about all day. He comes from the outside here. And there he is. He was outside the uh, the screen. He came outside, and then he just he, he just came and hit Detmer just as he threw the ball. 144 left now. Fourth and ten at the Denver 14. Detmer backs out. Flag on the play. Five yards. Fourth down. 
Neil Smith is, has really picked his game up. Yeah. I think that you know, part of it is, 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 is being ahead, and it's a little easier to play defense when you're ahead. But he's given Richard Cooper over there at right tackle uh, kind of all he can handle today. It's much easier to rush the passer when you're way ahead like this. Well, you know, Ray Rhodes was saying that uh, when he was the defensive coordinator with the San Francisco 49ers, Mike Shanahan was the offensive coordinator. And he said Shanahan would tell him how many points he was going to get. And he said that always made Ray feel good because he could be a lot more aggressive on defense. Hetmer lofting for the end zone incomplete. And no flags intended for Cincino. He's one of the guys that was a, a free agent for this team and to see Cincino and was a pleasant surprise that came in and he was kind of heavy and didn't look like anything at a mini camp. Came back the next time, lost 30 pounds, and can run. And can run, and the and the Eagles are are really impressed with him as a, a future tight end. They had a Syracuse it and wasn't even drafted. So the Broncos will take over. A minute 39 left. Each team has two timeouts remaining. The Broncos say, let's just run it out. They started their kneel down at a minute 30. Yep. And Mike Shanahan is just going to kneel down again. Mike Shanahan, a, a good friend of Ray Rhodes, they were on the same staff, the San Francisco 49ers. Look at that, 5 and 0. Oh. Don't forget, coming up next, baseball, the Houston Astros and the San Diego Padres, game four. If there is another game, it's Monday night. Another kneel down, less than a minute. 19 consecutive regular season wins for these Denver Broncos here at Mile High Stadium. You know, and you think with, with John Elway's injury with a hamstring, like I said earlier, you, you kind of know that that's going to be better in a few weeks. With the back, you don't know about that. And, you have to think that Mike Shanahan and this whole Bronco organization has to be real happy that that uh, Bill Romanowski made a call and said hey why don't you give Bobby Brister a try. I think he may be able to do something. Here comes Mike Shanahan over to say hello at least to Ray Rhodes. They work together in San Francisco. 1 to 16. Denver victorious. That's a final. A long afternoon for the Eagles at Mile High.